Thank you, thank you. Are you ready, New York City? I'm hyped up, I know you're hyped up, the world is hyped up, the entire card is hyped up. To see 244, the entire card is so stacked, but then of course, the main event, the BMF title. To determine who is gonna be the baddest man on the planet. Look, you know, I gotta, I'm such, it's, it's such an honor to be able to place this title around the waist of the winner, Jorge Masvidal, whether it's Jorge, whether it's Nate Diaz, again, it's such an honor. And I just wanna, Oh, it's a, oh, I see what you want. <laughs> if you smell what the rock is cooking. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, you know, I gotta say that um, I just wanted to come out here and just take a moment, number one, let you know how excited I was about this fight. New York City, Madison Square Garden, um, the most famous arena in the world and an arena that I have such a profound respect for. I started my career here in New York City. I started my career, I had my very first wrestling match in Madison Square Garden and that crowd, that arena and this city embraced me like a son, like I know you guys are gonna embrace that main event and all the fighters tomorrow night. So that said, there's something that I, uh, that I just wanted to announce, I'm very excited to announce this. I wanted to start with the MMA community, I wanted to start with the UFC fans, I wanted to start with you guys first. And that announcement is I'm proud to say that myself and Seven Bucks Productions are gonna make a film about the life of one of your founding fathers, the pioneering founding fathers, the smashing machine, Mark Kerr. <laughs> Everybody's hyped. I love you back, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> so that's, a, that's an announcement I'm very excited about. I think we have a few questions. Um, <laughs> yes. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, buddy. Hey, congratulations on the announcement. Oh, thank you, man, very excited. I think a lot of the MMA community have already known that you've been a fan of this sport for a long time. But what, um, what about this topic and, and this subject got you interested that you had to, had to get involved in the project? Well, you know, yes, I've been a fan of MMA for a very, very long time, a fan of these fighters, a fan of these warriors. And, you know, when you think about the world of MMA that everybody in this room loves, and we have such a, a great respect for and a love and a reverence is, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, there's, there's individuals in MMA there's warriors in MMA, men and women, who have this incredible humanity, who have achieved these incredible accomplishments. And that's what I want the world to see. Because these men and women, who again, we love all around the world who are in MMA, um, sacrifice so much. And there's so much pressure. There is so much pressure for them to win, there's so much pressure for them to succeed, and there's so much pressure for them to remain on top if they're fortunate enough to be on top. Mark Kerr's story is such an incredible story. Here's a guy who won the two-time um, uh, heavyweight tournament, uh, the early stages of UFC, um, and here's also a guy who went over to Pride. He had this incredible run, as many of these warriors have, uh, and, it's a sh and I wanted to shine a spotlight on this man who is still alive Alive and but also, you know, I think what's interesting about Mark uh, about Mark Kerr's story is, you know, yes, he achieved so much in his life. He was a smashing machine, undefeated for for a long time. Um, but also, like all of us, and like a lot of these fighters, battled these demons. 
And these demons of addiction, these demons of mental health, these demons of getting out and the pressure of fighting in front of 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people um, and what that does to somebody. So here's a guy who has gone through it all, hit rock bottom, but the best part about Mark Kerr is that like all of us in this room and like these fighters, by the way, all these warriors is every day you get up and you wanna do a little bit better tomorrow than you did today. So you're, uh, you're involved in this project, obviously. You're, you're putting a belt on somebody's waist tomorrow. Are there any other goals related to the MMA world that you, you have on your bucket list? Well, uh, oh, yes. Like, so are you asking if I have an ambition to actually get in the octagon? Well, hey, if, if that's there, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm content with becoming Mark Kerr. And at this point, you know, the most successful part of my Octagon career, I'm sure, would be my entrance music. And then that's where we'd add. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Another... Hey, DJ. Hey, Ewag. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Good. Congratulations. Hold on, guys. Wait a second. There's clearly some good weed in New York City, but you guys got to hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to ask about the role. This sounds like it's a dramatic role. You just said it's about a man who battled his demons. And we haven't really seen you tackle a dramatic role in this sense. We've seen you do comedy. We've seen you do a ton of action. Why were you drawn to this particular role? I was drawn to Mark Kerr's story because he has such a compelling story. As many of you know, you might have seen the documentary of Smashing Machine. I watched it years ago, 12, 13 years ago. I was really moved by Mark's life and moved by his story. And at that time, you know, in the mid to late 90s, where I was cresting in the world of professional wrestling in the WWE, we had a lot of guys who at that time in MMA were fighting in the UFC, went over to Pride. We had a lot of friends. We were, Mark and I were training kind of in the same circles at that time out in the West Coast in LA. So yes, it's a dramatic role, but Mark has actually lived a dramatic life. And again, it's an opportunity to shine the light on one of our warriors who not only deserves it, but also, uh, you know, I think has this universal appeal and universal story. Again, the guy was a beast and he was dominant and there was, and there was only one like him, you know, at that time. You know, when you think about these fighters, Elizabeth, and a lot of you guys in here in this room know, you know, these warriors, these MMA, there's no other sport like MMA. There's no other sport like MMA with the multiple disciplines and the pressure and the fact that you put, on, put your life on the line, literally. Every time you step in a cage, you step in an octagon, you step in a ring. And so Mark's story is one of those stories that I wanna tell. And also, again, when you think about these warriors is they speak a different language. They speak a different language. And if you dig a little deeper than the physicality that they have, you know, there's a, there's a real character of depth to a lot of these warriors, and Mark is one of them. So I'm really excited about it. I talked with Mark today. He's, Mark is, Mark is a special dude, and he's, he's really overwhelmed that this is happening, and I love that he trusts me with his life and with his story. And Mark actually said, I told him I was gonna come and make the announcement to, um, you know, our, our MMA world and the fans, and he said, um, you know, he said something pretty cool. He said, well, tell everybody I love them. And, um, but he also said, I, I actually, he goes, um, I don't have the language to express just how grateful I am that you're sharing this story. So I thought that was really cool and beautiful and, and I can't wait. I think that's it, or do we have more questions? We got time for one more question. One more question. Yeah. Well, you, you touched on it a little bit. I mean, the Smashing Machine is not all highs. I mean, there's a lot of lows in there as well. It's a very powerful story uh, for those that haven't seen it. So I'm curious, you know, getting Mark involved in this, was it, was it difficult? I mean, did you have to talk to him much? And, and will he be involved with the project moving forward? Because again, it's, it's, you know, it's not just a, a fairy tale story. No, it's not. And, and of course, Mark is going to be involved. And I've had, you know, conversations with Mark. Again, I've known Mark for years. And, and you know, we first met years and years ago. Um, so Mark obviously is going to be involved. But also, too, you know, I told Mark, look, here's, here's the best thing about it, you know, between 
Mark and myself and a lot of these UFC fighters, a lot of these MMA fighters, as you guys in this room have known, you know, there's this interesting parallel between, especially when I was in the WWE in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s, interesting parallel with the world of pro wrestling, MMA. We lost a lot of good friends of ours to addiction and drug use, who were these pro wrestlers dying at an early age and some MMA wrestlers too, I'm sorry, MMA fighters dying at an early age. So I told Mark, you know, look, the fact, here, here's the fact, you made it. You achieved greatness, you hit rock bottom, you're sober, you made it, and I'm gonna shine the light on your life. All right, thank you for those questions, and UFC fans, thank you so much for the love. I appreciate it. It's gonna be an honor to put the BMF title around that waist and an honor to become the smashing machine. I love y'all, thank you.